Well, so if we look at this situation now, we're not far away from the federal election. And I guess, you know, <coughs> practitioners in politics, it's always in, in mind. And, and your argument in terms of them being slow has generated a bit of traction. It's, that's true. I think everyone would agree with that. But once everyone's had the jab or everyone's had the chance to and things start to get back to a bit of normality, what's your pitch then? Well, Anthony, Anthony will be outlining, along with the rest of the Labor team, a range of policies that, that go to the recovery, that go to building back better. I mean, there still is a long way to go through this pandemic, Kieran, and although we have finally got to a position where supply is catching up with demand, there are still a range of other details about how we move through coming months that the Prime Minister still hasn't landed. Still, our quarantine arrangements are, are terribly lacking. Uh, we still only have one purpose-built quarantine facility in the country, that is, in the Northern Territory. The facilities that have some level of agreement between the Commonwealth and states appear still to be months and months off. Now, we have a, a trial on home quarantine that's happening in my state, in South Australia. That's a good thing. But we need to do much better on quarantine. This whole system of vaccine passports, which is so critical to business being able to take advantage of the recovery with real confidence, is a dog's breakfast at the moment. There's no national leadership around this. We appear to be moving to a system of eight different systems, a different system in every single state and territory. Some states able to piggyback off their QR code systems, some having systems that don't allow a marriage between the QR code check-in and the, and the uh, immunisation register or record of the vaccine. So where is the leadership from a national level to set up a seamless national vaccine passport system that gives business confidence to move forward? There's still a lot to do okay. for this pandemic. We're not through it yet. And just um, one other question out of uh, the health area. <laughs> I have to ask you, your old sparring partner uh, from the right faction, Joel Fitzgibbon, announcing he's going to retire. No tears from you? Joel's had a great career, um, a long, distinguished career of 25 years. He's entitled to feel very proud of his contributions to his community and to his party, a party I know he loves very dearly. Um, Joel and I have always had a fantastic relationship. Sometimes it might not appear that way to your viewers, but it has been a, a really productive, respectful relationship. Now, he and I uh, have disagreed on some matters and we've had a frank but very respectful debate about climate change policy. And I think that's the right way to do it. This is an incredibly critical, very difficult, highly contested policy area for the country. When you're a party of government like Labor, which is seen as the party of change and implementing difficult restructurings, going back to the Hawke and Keating record and so on and so forth, you want people in the party who feel free to have those respectful, frank debates. And I always felt free to have that debate with Joel. We're going to miss him. And uh, finally, uh, another matter, Christian Porter has uh, revealed that a blind trust <laughs> has made a contribution as part of his legal fees um, in terms of his declaration. Is that, is that reasonable or should he be upfront about who's funded the legal component of his uh, court battles recently? I had to read this twice to check whether I'd read it correctly the first time. Frankly, the idea that a Minister of the Crown can take a donation of, a, I understand, up to a million dollars without being able to explain where it's from uh, is gobsmacking. It is just completely unacceptable. If a Minister of the Crown, any Member of Parliament for that matter, cannot explain the source of a donation, they should not take it. They just simply should not take it. If he can't tell us whether it was someone associated with his portfolio, whether it was a lobbyist, whether it was someone with criminal backgrounds, if he can't assure us of that, he should not be accepting the donation. He should hand it back. And I, I think the idea that a former Attorney General, someone who portrays himself as you know, a great lawyer, thinks that this is anything other than completely unacceptable is gobsmacking. Mark Butler, appreciate your time. Thanks. Thanks, Kieran.